Okay, here's another limit problem. And this is a useful limit to know. It's just another one of those random little formulas that are worth memorizing. So it says the limit as theta goes to zero of sine theta over theta equals one. And you can actually flip over this fraction and make it into theta over sine theta as well and still have that equaling one. And again, if you try the plug and chug method, if you plug in theta equals zero, you'll get sine of zero, which is zero, and zero on the bottom. So you get zero over zero. There's a couple ways to justify this. Um, in the calculus book I have, they actually go through a relatively you know, complicated, I wouldn't say super straightforward argument. You can also use L'Hopital's rule if you've seen that. And we'll also, there will be a video where you can check out some problems using L'Hopital's rule. But in any event, let's just take it at face value and do a couple examples using this identity. Okay, so the idea basically, the way I, I think about it is, it says, okay, you have sine of theta over theta. It says whatever you have next to the sine, you want the exact same thing in the denominator as long as the stuff inside the parentheses is going to zero. Well, in this case, I have 3x on top. Well, I would like to have a 3x in the bottom. Well, let's just make that happen. I'll multiply the denominator by 3, but if I multiply the denominator by 3, I also have to multiply the numerator by 3. Okay, so there's my extra 3. Again, notice I could just cancel those out and be back to my original problem. And now I can use this identity on it, this limit result. It says I have the same thing next to sine, the same thing on the bottom. The stuff on the inside as x approaches 0. This is certainly going to 0. This is certainly going to 0. It turns out that this whole limit is 1. And I still have to multiply that by 3. So my solution will be 3. The next one's a touch more complicated. I'm going to rewrite this. I have the limit as t goes to 0. Again, you should check if you plug in 0, you get sine of 0, which is 0. On top, you'll get tangent of 0, which is 0. So we do have 0 over 0. I'm going to rewrite this so that I have tangent of 6t over 1 times 1 over sine of 2t. Squeeze that in there. Okay, and now I'm going to rewrite tangent. I can rewrite tangent of 6t as sine of 6t. And this is divided by cosine of 6t. I'm going to put the cosine of 6t over here. Okay, so this is over 1. This is You can think about a 1 being up here. And then I still have my original sine of 2t in the denominator. So again, I'm not putting my over 1 and my 1 on top and my 1 on the bottom just yet because I'm going to start filling stuff in. I am going to put one of them right there. So now I start thinking about these two original identities again. It says whatever's next to the sine, I either want that same thing in the bottom, or if sine happens to be in the denominator, I want that same thing in the top. Okay, well, I have sine of 6t here. Well, I'm going to multiply the denominator by 6t. That means I have to multiply the numerator somewhere by a 6t. Okay, well, let's just remember that for a second. On the top of this, I would like to have a 2t. Well, I've got to multiply the numerator by a t somewhere because I added this t in. Why don't I put that extra t that I would like on top here? And again, I still have to multiply the numerator somewhere by a 6. So I'll just bring my 6 out here. Okay, so now this one looks exactly like I would want it to. I've got my t would cancel out with this t my 6 would cancel out with this 6 and I would be right back to where I was before and the only thing left is well I have 2t down here I would like to have a 2t here same idea I've already got the t just multiply the numerator by 2 I'll multiply the denominator by 2 
and now I'm finished. I've got sine of something divided by that same something. Again, oops, I've got thetas in here. I slipped a theta in here. This should be a t. As t goes to zero, the inside goes to zero, the bottom goes to zero. So this whole limit is going to turn into a one. Okay, this we have to actually evaluate. If you plug in six times zero, you'll get zero. And cosine of zero is one. So I'm getting one over one from this part. Again, this limit is going to be just plain old one. And then I'm left with six divided by two, which is three. So it says my answer to this problem is going to be just plain old three. You really won't run into these types of limit problems too terribly often, but it's one of those w weird little things that you will see, you know, just enough to where it is worth remembering these basic limits at the very beginning.